All right, we're day 33, friends, and we're in 2 Peter 3, 8 through 13. Before I read it, you're going to say, wait, we already read that. We did. And we're going to look at it again. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Said he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy, godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. The day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Our, our devotion today comes from Pastor Truman Rock. It's hard for us to imagine being across the Great Divide. Try to imagine explaining the difference between red and orange to one who's born blind. It cannot be there. You need a frame of reference. So it is with us to understand life in the day of the Lord. We can imagine the destruction of the old, but we cannot imagine the life with the Lord and perfect harmony with Him. So how should we live? We ought to live holy and godly lives. I live among folks who have planned for their lives for retirement, for vacation. What should we look forward to? The day of the Lord? I cannot describe what I have not seen, but I can describe the Lord Jesus. It is enough that we should be like him. This is a song that Marcy would sometimes play and sing that I heard on a recording and I was right as I was writing this devotion. It expresses how I feel and gives Marcy the last word. She that is dead yet speaketh. I know not when my Lord will come a night or noonday fair, or if I'll walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I'm believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep me till that day. Thank you, Pastor Truman. Uh, yeah, we already looked at this passage, and there's so many things in here. And that we didn't look at last time. And I liked how he talked about the living, holy, and godly lives. And frankly, that seems hard. It seems difficult. The, the thing is, is we, and I mean we, English-speaking world, have elevated this idea of holiness to otherworldly status. Like, in order to be holy, you have to be divine. That's not the idea. That's not the call. The root of the word is to be separate, is to be set apart, is to be distinctly different. When God called the people at Mount Sinai and asked them to be holy, they were to be set apart, a different people working on different things, living differently than all the surrounding nations around them. That was the agreement that they made. We will live differently. And we as Christians should live differently. We should be separate, set apart, distinct, so that when we are there with other people, people know there's something different about us. They might not be able to put their finger on it, but it is going to stand out in such a way that they will ask us to give a reason for the hope that we have. Peter also said that. So our godly lives are there to speak, even when we aren't trying to. The way we conduct ourselves, the way we live, the way we do things are going to point to Jesus. So, whether it's a day or it's a thousand years, 
our living today makes all the difference for us and for others.